Hi, my name is Ella Harris, and I'm a math teacher, a seventh grade math teacher, and also a Desmos fellow. Um, what that means is I have uh, applied to the Desmos fellowship, gotten a little bit of a, an amazing experience to get some extra PD from the staff at Desmos about uh, the calculator and the activity builder. And I'm hoping to share some of that with you through a series of PDs for Keep Indiana Learning. So this one's about the Desmos graphing calculator. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about what this isn't, and then we'll explore some of the reasons why math teachers should be using the Desmos graphing calculator in class. And then we'll look at two math problems using the graphing calculator to explore those ideas. And then um, I'll share some additional resources where you can go if you want to learn a little bit more about how to graph in the Desmos graphing calculator. I always wanna talk a little bit about what this isn't. So um, this is not a PD about the Desmos Activity Builder. I hope that that is coming soon to keep Indiana learning. Um, it's also not an update on new Desmos features or tools, and it's also not about the Desmos geometry tool. So we're really going to focus on the calculator. Uh, and let me talk a little bit about why the Desmos calculator. So Desmos is the calculator of choice for assessments in 40 different states, including Indiana, Smarter Balance Assessments, NWEA, NIB tests. Um, and it's really increasingly becoming the calculator of choice for digital assessments around the country and internationally. It's also a calculator that prioritizes ease of use and accessibility. So the focus can really be on the map. I remember being in high school and memorizing a whole series of buttons on my TI-84 uh, to try to remember my graphing calculator, to try to remember how to get to certain features. And it does most really tries to not be that. So the less time we can spend in class memorizing buttons to push and the more time we can, the more time we have to focus on the math. And I hope to show you a little bit of that ease of use. And the other reason that we should be using Desmos is it really helps students ask questions and find answers themselves. And isn't that really the goal of math class? We'll talk a lot about what if and just a whole series of what if questions that Desmos graphing calculator can spark. And then we really hope it can be a playground. One example of how it's become a playground is through the amazing Desmos Global Art Contest. This is the winner in 2021 from the 15 to 16 age category. And that whole image is created in a Desmos graphing calculator. Every single one of those lines and those shaded sections is a function. Um, you can click on the link, to see the actual graphing calculator link and see some of the animations as well too. And open the folders and look at the math. Here's the winner from the 13 to 14 year old category. Again, amazing, amazing stuff. Um, and again, you can click on the link to see the actual calculator uh, link and the, the folders to look at the equations and see the animations, the mathematical animations in there. So stay tuned for some future PD uh, or future blog posts discussing Desmos art and how to assess with Desmos art and some ideas and some things that I've done in my actual um, middle school uh, algebra classrooms in Indiana. Okay, so let's jump into the actual problems. So we are gonna look at two problems here. One is just a classic exploration of the volume formula for a cylinder. You see some cylinders there in that image. So if you're like me, one of the first things I remember learning about cylinders in school was the formula, starting with the formula. And then I kind of plug numbers in there and usually got the right answers. But I don't know that I really spent a lot of time thinking deeply about that formula and what it looks like when I change different things in that formula. So I'm going to jump out of the slideshow and into a Desmos graph, and I will link these back in the slides at the end of the presentation. So here is a blank Desmos graph, and I'm going to jump in just with typing the formula. Start to get good at some of these Desmos shortcuts after you've done it for a little while, but you can also put some links at the end so you can learn about all of the, the uh, resources to learn how to graph in the Desmos calculator. And I'm going to add some sliders. So it gave me that little pop up to add some sliders. I added one for radius and for height. And right now the slider is set at one. 
can see that if my radius was one and my height was one, my volume would be pi, which makes sense. What I wanna do is I'm gonna adjust these sliders just a little bit. So I'm gonna click on edit. So I can see some of the things I can edit here. And I am going to make the sliders move in whole numbers. I'm also just gonna make them start at zero because I don't actually need negative numbers for my formula. So I just made them from zero to 10, but you can change the range of the slider using this part of the graph right here. And I'm gonna make this one whole numbers as well. The step just means what is the, the space of the step. Okay, so right now, now you can see when I drag the slider, it can only land on whole numbers. So I'm restricted to these whole numbers right here. Let's take a look at what happens when I change height. So this is my answer. When volume is one and radius is one, we're gonna leave radius as one and I'm gonna change height to two. And I might ask students, what happened to the volume? Oh, it gets bigger. What's it get bigger by? What are we multiplying by? And I might go back to the volume at one so they can take a look at that. And they hopefully to me, oh, I, I notice I'm multiplying by two. Okay, if you notice when I change it to three. Oh, I notice that I'm multiplying by three. Okay, great. So we notice that when we change the height, we're basically changing the volume by that number, by the scale of that number. Yeah, okay, let's take a look at what happens when we change radius. Okay, here it is when it's one. Oh, here's when it's two. What did you notice? Oh, that, Ms. Harris, that changed that more than changing the height, yeah. I wonder why, and students might also wonder why, and then they might find that answer in the equation. It's because it's squared in the equation. Oh, so what are we multiplying the volume by when we change the radius to two? Oh, we're actually multiplying it by four. Changing the radius to the two is the same as the volume we get when we change the height to four. Oh, I wonder why. Students might come up with that answer. Oh, it's because it's two squared. So there's this exploration that I can get just by looking at the formula in the graphing calculator and moving some sliders around and having a conversation. You can do that with any formula that you're learning about as you're just exploring volume and surface area and it really connects the radius and the height to that equation. Okay, so that was our first problem I wanted to briefly explore. And I'll put the link in there. And the second one we're going to explore, I'll also add the link here at the end. The second one we're going to explore is this algebra problem. So this is a classic algebra problem. We're going to join a gym in January. Fit Club charges an initial fee of $100 plus $30 a month, and Planet Fit charges $50 a month. So I made these numbers up, but this problem exists in 100 Algebra 1 curriculums and 8th grade curriculums as we're exploring this real-world connection to a linear function. So I'm going to jump into the Desmos link here. And I, I was playing around with this, so I'm going to reset my graph here to just 10 and 10 so I can show you kind of what happens if I started from the beginning. 10 and 10, okay. This is what we might get if we just opened a blank graphing calculator. And one of the things I love is that I don't need to use Y. We have context in this problem. It's about a real thing. So why not use F? Uh, because that's my club. That's the name of Fit Club. It's $30 a month and then a initial fee of $100. Okay, our one was Planet Fit. And that one was $50 a month, 50X. Okay, so now I got different colors here. It can help me think about these. I can the colors if I want one to be blue and one to be purple, one to be blue and one to be different color than blue, red, let's do blue and red. Okay, and then here's some other things I can do. So this little gear allows me to do a bunch of things on the side here. So let's say I want to see this in a table. What does this expression look like in a table? I can just click on that table link and it's going to create a table for me. It starts with these values. Um, but I can really see, okay, at zero months, it's going to cost $100. At one, it's 130 And then I'm going to click on this little Zoom Fit link right here on the left. And what it's going to do is automatically zoom that math, that graph, into a great fit for that graph. So now I can see some of these values on this table. And I can really just explore to just look at quadrant one. That's the one that makes sense here. Let's fit table. 
for my second function. And then I might ask students, okay, what does this point mean, 150? Oh, okay, so for Planet Fit, for one month, it costs $50. What does this point mean? So 100. And I can click on the points to get those coordinates to show up. For two months, it costs $100. We can edit over here and I can add labels to my axes. So you're telling me that that one and that two meant months. So let's add the word months to the X axis and you can see it shows up right down here. And what did you tell me the 50 and the 100 was? Oh, that was the dollars that you pay. So let's add the word dollars to the, or the cost in dollars to the Y axis because that's what we're talking about on the y-axis. So we're making sense of some of these numbers and some of these numbers in the table. Then I might ask students, okay, how many months do you think it would be until you paid exactly the same amount at both of these places? And hopefully some students might come up with an answer. Ms. Harris, I think it's five. Why do you think it's five? Well, if you see that's where the lines cross, if you click on five, you can see that at that point, it's on both of the lines. And I'm gonna say, okay, well, what do you think uh, they, they would pay at both gyms after five months? And they might say $250, how do you know that? Oh, it's from that point right there. So much rich exploration and you can do even more with this. So I'm gonna delete some of these tables, to give us a little more space over here so we can see. And let's turn these into functions with f of x. Now I'm going to add another one. So what would happen if I did S of X and it's going to be the cost at one gym minus the cost of another? Oh, that's how much I'm saving if I'm going from this gym or S of X, F of X, the planet, this one minus this one right here. Amazing. So zero months. I'm not saving anything. I'm spending $100 more. What do you guys notice about this graph? Oh, I noticed that at five, it's at zero. Oh, so after five months, the cost is going to be exactly the same. And then what about the other ones? Okay, well, now it's going to be negative because you're no longer saving money by going to this one because now this gym is going to cost more than this gym. So there's so much rich math discussion that you can get by putting things into this graphing calculator and exploring it and talking about it. So I just really encourage people to kind of just explore and play around. I am going to link to that, these two graphs in the slideshow that I'm sharing as well. And then my last few things to really think about it are these two links right here. So if you go to this link, the Desmos Help Center, there is just such a huge uh, set of resources on how to graph things. So frequently asked questions, but also, you know, anything you might need to grasp. What if I'm working on functions? What if I'm working on derivatives, integrals, parametric equations, polar graphing, sliders, statistics, like just all these amazing things that you can do in the Desmos graphing calculator. So definitely check this link out. Um, and then the other one, is as you're building, you know, kind of your essential skills on a graph, consider going through these little links to think about, okay, how can I change the color? How can I convert a function to a table? We did that in this, in this uh, animation or in this uh, PD, how can I add domain and range restrictions? So all these little things that you might want to adjust, you can find in kind of just bite-sized chunks um, with these resources right here. So I really hope that you will um, consider uh, doing some content exploration with the Desmos graphing calculator um, and that you will uh, continue to, to work towards, um, you know, developing a deeper understanding of the math using this calculator in your classroom. Thank you so much for coming and learning just a little bit about it from me right now. And I'd also just really encourage you to reach out with questions. I always tell people that my number one goal is that Indiana can be the center of math exploration and math learning. So I really just want to make that happen. Um, so please reach out to me, talk to me about 
Desmos and or all the other amazing things going on in Indiana math classrooms. Thank you so much.